In this video, we're going to be painting this lovely deer set in this gorgeous Christmas scene. I'm painting this in acrylics. Now the reference photo that I have used for this particular painting is from wildlife reference photographs and there is a small charge to be able to use this. I think it's something like $10 and you get five high quality photographs um, and it is really worthwhile for anybody who's into doing animals or wildlife. Um, it is a wonderful resource. However, if you'd like to paint this with me for free, I've actually found a lovely reference photo from Pixabay and I've included a free drawing of this, a free tracing and that's available on the Mazar Academy if you'd like to paint along with me. The same colours that I've used for this particular painting will still apply with the new reference photo. So I'm using a 12 by 9 boxed canvas from Panart. Um, they actually sent me this, I've covered this in previous videos and I have been promising a tutorial using this boxed canvas and I thought this lovely Christmas painting would be perfect. So I want to establish a nice mottled green colour. So the colours I'm using is um, phalo green, cobalt teal, some cobalt blue, some Payne's grey or you could use black and some white and I'm really just going to plot these colours on and create a really nice mottled mix. Here I'm just using a little bit of water to help the paint flow. Now you do need that Payne's grey to sort of grey down the colours so they don't become too bright and only using a little bit of white but I want this to look quite mottled I'm also going to be painting the sides of this panel so when it's finished I can simply hang it straight on the wall Once you've put the first layer on, you want to use a hairdryer and dry everything off and then I'm going to repeat the process. Unfortunately, I've lost the footage, but I repeated exactly the same, just added a little bit more of that phalo green and the darker colours just so that it was on the darker side. I'm going to begin by blocking in the darker tones, such as the eye and the nose, and I'm simply just using black for that. Now I'm also using black to create some shadows as well, just very lightly brushing the direction that the hair is growing. I'm not trying to paint individual hairs at this stage as I'll be adding much more layers on top of this, but I do want to add those shadows um, which really will help um, build the structure and the form of our deer. Once I've got those darker tones established, I'm going to switch now to some burnt umber and begin establishing some of the middle tones that I can see. Again, at this stage, I'm really just focusing on blocking in. And next I'll lighten the tone with a little raw sienna and some yellow ochre. And again at this point it really is just about establishing those three basic tones. Um, again just brushing in the direction that the hair is growing as opposed to trying to paint individual little hairs at this stage. But we've got a dark tone on there, we've got a mid tone on and now I'm looking for a lighter tone. And those three tones will really establish the form of our deer. Thank you. 
turning my attention now to the face I'm going to work in exactly the same way looking for those three basic tones Adding a little bit of white to the mixture now for a lighter tone and I'll begin blocking in the antlers. Now that the initial blocking in stages are done, I'm going to continue um, going over the same processes, adding some darker tones, adding some lighter tones, and then um, adding those middle tones. So we're going to put another layer on this, and we may do two or three layers until you've got the desired coverage that you want. Now the basic blocking is done, I'm going to switch my attention to the background, to this lovely landscape and I'm going into some cobalt teal here and just going to establish a lighter area. And I'll change things up by throwing in a little magenta into that mixture and even cobalt blue. So we've got that lovely centre area that's just slightly over to the left hand side and that's going to be our light source. Now I'm using a really nice dark green mixture of sap green and black. I'm going to begin putting in some of the trees. I'm keeping these strokes very, very loose by constantly twisting that bristle fan brush around so that my strokes are nice and irregular and I'm giving the illusion of a fir tree. Here I'm using a light mixture of sort of a blue grey just to get some background trees in there and then again I'll switch to the um, dark green and start adding a further fir tree. Here I'm adding another lighter area over the top. Again with acrylics it's all about those layers. So I'm using white over the top of that cobalt teal. I'm actually mixing it with the cobalt teal as well um, so that it doesn't go too bright too quickly. So you want to be mixing those wet into wet and I'm using um, a bristle fan brush again just to kind of really push that colour around and make sure that all those edges are soft. But now we have established a really lovely light source and I'm not worried about going over any trees because again we can always put those back in Thank you. 
back to that cobalt seal now and I'm using a flat brush this time and we're going to begin establishing some of the snowy areas. And just like with the sky, I'm also picking up a little bit of magenta and kind of throwing that in as well. And this is just to get lots of different variety in there. Using a mixture of burnt umber and some raw sienna, I'm going to begin establishing the trees in the distance. And I'll start to add some branches to those as well. Now that my background trees are established, I'm going back with a dark mix um, of green and black and beginning to establish that lovely fir tree. Because acrylics is all about layers, I'm going to add another layer to the snow. Gradually adding a little more white to that teal mixture um, over on that right hand side. Don't take the white too far over, we want to establish that lovely lighter area. Using the teal mixture and a bristle filbert brush, I'm going to lightly start to tap on some snow. I'm repeating that over on the smaller fir tree. Lighten that teal with a little bit of white and begin adding yet another layer. Mm -hmm. 
I'm also lightening the trees over on the right hand side. Now when you're lightening these be careful not to take that light too far back. We do still want that shadowed effect um, from those branches. I've sped the footage up a little bit for you here because I am just going to keep repeating that process, adding more layers on um, with that highlighted colour. Once my background is established, I'm once again going to turn my attention to our deer, really starting to bring some stronger highlights and some extra details. As you can see, I'm being a little bit more deliberate with my brush marks and making sure that everything follows the direction that the hair is growing. Now this section is very repetitive, so once again I'm going to speed up the footage for you so you can actually see the whole process of me dancing around between those light colours, dark colours, mid-tones and just constantly adjusting and adding those layers.
Now to create these lovely coloured Christmas lights I'm going to be using a dry brush technique and a bristle brush um, and really you just scrub in, sort of rub in on the colours that you want um, to try and create a little bit of a glow. So for the blue ones I'm just using some of the cobalt blue and for the um, pink ones we're just using the magenta and then for the green ones I'm actually using some phalo green so these are quite transparent colors and all I'm doing as you can see is just rubbing small little circles they're going on quite transparently as a dry brush technique so it is important that your acrylic colors underneath are completely dry so use a hairdryer to dry those off if you need to Inside of my lovely phalo green, I'm using a bright yellow green um, highlight colour, which I will be softening, um, but this is going to start establishing our lovely um, twinkling lights. Now I'm using a dome blender and smudging and tapping that colour into that um, green that we laid down earlier, really trying to soften these. Next, I'll go back to that yellow green and I'm just going to flick these colours out, creating that little star burst effect um, to try and get that feeling of twinkly lights. So you can see I'm going into the centre and just flicking that colour out from all sides. And then I'll go into some very thick titanium white and put a little tiny dot right into the center. And this is what's going to give us that lovely glow, that twinkling effect. Now for the pink ones I'm adding white with a touch of that magenta and once again just flicking that colour out and then I'll go back with that thick titanium white and put another little dot in that centre. I'm going to continue building on that snow using just pure titanium white now but this time you want to be very selective where you place that you want this in your center of interest and not carry that too far across the painting so once again I'm using an old bristle brush here and just tapping on lightly to create that snow effect I'll use pure white again to add another layer on the snow and once again just keeping that in the centre of interest don't carry that bright colour too far across the painting Thank you. 
And to finish the deer, I'm using some cobalt teal and white to give a little bit of a rim light. Um, firstly, to help establish um, the deer from the background, but also to bring some of that teal colour into the deer to help sort of establish it within this painting. And once you're happy, you can sign the painting. Well, I really do hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I've really, really enjoyed painting this one. And again, if you'd like to paint along with me, I have included a free tracing of a different deer, but all the colors and all the things that I've used in this particular painting will still work. If you are enjoying the tutorials on this channel and you'd like to see more, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And also leave a comment down below. Let me know what sort of paintings you'd like to see on the channel as well. I really do appreciate the feedback. So next week, I'll be bringing you an oil painting Christmas tutorial. So if you'd like to see that again, remember to subscribe to the channel. Once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. In this video, we're going to be painting this wonderful no. Now the reference photo that I've used for this particular painting is from Wildlife. What is it? Now the reference photo that I've used from this so I'll be working entirely in acrylics for this particular photograph. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video. That will do.